Oh, hey guys, welcome back to the garage again. Working on uh, prepping up a vehicle for a trip coming up. I'll tell you more about it here in a second, but uh, first thing I gotta do is uh, swap these vehicles around. So let's get that out of the way. Got the LX45 swapped in here. Sorry, that shot was a little blurry. Um, some camera tech for you. So YouTube, you know, trying to figure out how to do all this new stuff. Um, always, you know, kind of the camera side of things and the videoing is super challenging for me. Um, honestly, don't like doing it that much. And so trying to find ways to make it easy and um, simple and stuff. And so I am using a DJI Action 4 uh, camera currently and then I have a, a DJI uh, mic 2 so that's the mic there um, pretty nice system because they connect um, without another dongle uh, just wirelessly like you don't have to have the receiver um, in the camera uh, the two just talk to each other so that's kind of nice a little easy gets a little bit better audio for you guys but anyways uh, the reason why the shot was blurry um, action cameras um, <sighs> have some focus issues and one of those uh is up close focusing so like um they have a, a fairly i don't know if you can see this if it'll when it turns blurry um is about like less you know ab about two feet or so um and so what you can do and let me just take this off and you'll see the change here almost immediately um is you can use one of these little uh um, it's not a filter. It is a, um, uh, basically it's a, uh, plus one or a plus two, um, would it be a macro? And so they make these little adapters here, um, that fit on the, the DJI action Two that let you use like normal, um, uh, camera style, uh, lens filters and stuff like that. But, uh, um, this one is a plus two and it, it lets the focus length be a lot closer than normal. So now without a filter at all, you can see, uh, where the camera has focus problems is a lot sooner, at least from what I've seen. And so, um, these are great, except the adapter does not fit very snugly, um, on the, the uh the camera it's just a little rubber ring that it fits around and um i uh i dropped it and uh went to go grab another one real quick and uh grabbed the wrong one so it was like a plus 10 which makes it like super fisheye um and uh made the shot blurry so anyways sorry for that um but anyways camera tech over for now and uh, got the LX45 in here. You can see how much freaking bigger this thing is than the uh, flatty in here. It made my garage feel super small. Um, I don't honestly have this thing in the garage um, that awfully much. And I guess for good reason, because um, you know I, I do work out of a small space. This is basically just like a large two car garage, but you can see how close it is to the, to the ceiling. Um, it actually bumped the little 
white cover for the garage door opener. I have to, I have to like stop and take the, um, even the little stubby antenna off the roof to get it through the door. Um, but it's also on forties and you know, uh, whatever five inches up travel. So fitting it through a normal garage door is pretty cool too. Um, but it just makes the space feel super small. So, uh, the big thing I have to do on this thing for this trip, let me tell you about that real quick. Um, I'm getting this thing ready to go on a big trip. Uh, I do with friends usually once a year, uh, these big trips. Um, this year we're going to go do the Ducey Ursham trail again. It's a really super cool trail in California, um, out of Fresno, uh, then up to Shaver Lake, uh, in the, I believe it's, uh, the right on the edge of the John Muir, uh, wilderness area. Uh, I've done it once before. It was a fantastic trip. Um, the first time we did it, we actually had a couple people not, um, finish, uh, just vehicle issues and, uh, actually one, um, one guy had a actually dislocated kind of his shoulder, uh, and, and had to, had to stop. So, um, anyways, uh, we are going back and doing that trail again. Um, we tried to a couple other times, uh, there was like a year of fires. There was a year it didn't open late till, till super late cause snow, um, you know, we didn't try to go back year to year. Uh, so this is the year, uh, we're going back. Uh, it is the middle of September right now, and you'll probably watch the video pretty close to that. Um, but, uh, we are going to be doing the trip, uh, after the beginning of October. So a late fall trip, the, uh, the Ducey Ursham trail is pretty unique. Um, it's very unique actually, uh, I think in the country, uh, in how remote it is, uh, how long it is, how difficult it is. It's a really interesting balance of that kind of thing, uh, especially for the USA. Uh, but we are going after October 1st and this year, um, that is special. The trail is only open a short period of time, uh, every year, uh, according to the use plan. So it's only open from August 1st to November 1st, but this year, uh, on October 1st, they're actually closing the, the access on the court right side across the dam. So traditionally, um, you, you are basically able to drive across this dam, uh, on the, on the court right side, the south side, I guess is what people call it. Um, and that's kind of the traditional, if you will, start of the trail and you, you court right, uh, you go up over Voyager Rock, Chicken Rock, um, Thompson Hill, up Thompson Hill, um, and then you get up to the lakes, Thompson Lake, Ursham Lake. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them up on the top. Um, and the, the trail is about 40 miles long, uh, off-road section. So like, uh, you know, to put that in perspective, it's like two Rubicons uh, back to back or doing the Rubicon both ways. Um, so it's quite long. The whole loop, uh, around from Shaver Lake is about 120 miles. Uh, so a, a pretty long trip by U S standards. Uh, most people, you know, uh, you can do it in a couple days, but we usually take a whole week and take our time. Uh, usually have a, a burner day in there just in case somebody has problems and issues. But what's unique this year, so that dam closes. So in order to run the whole trail, uh, we're going to have to run it twice. So we're going to have to run about 80 miles of, of the hard stuff, if you will, uh, low range. Um, and so we're going to have to take quite a bit of fuel, uh, to do that. And, uh, so I decided to take, um, you know, the LX 45 hasn't really been out much this year, uh, a couple little things, but nothing, no big serious trips. So I'm going to get it ready. Uh, to do this trip. It has a little bit more storage space than the flatty. Uh, the, the plain Jane Jeep, the JKU isn't ready and I don't want to force that. Um, and I, I don't think I'd take it cause it's kind of untested at this point. Um, so going to get the LX 45 ready. And one of the big things for that is new tires. So, uh, I've been running, um, Milestar Patagonia, MT, actually the black label versions, uh, since they first came out on the LX 45, uh, Milestar has always been very supportive, uh, with, uh, letting me test and, and, and evaluate their tires. And so, um, they actually sent over, um, a set of their, uh, XT, um, Patagonia's, their more all-terrain style tire for me to try out, um, on this trip and probably a couple other trips, um, as, as a, as a comparison, as a, 
uh, what would be the word, um, counterpoint to kind of the, the traditional mud terrain approach. Um, and so uh, really curious to try that out. The XT is definitely a uh, aggressive all-terrain, um, but it's one of the only um, all-terrain offerings in the market. I believe there's a couple out now, but the XT is, is one of only a few uh, of these kind of um, aggressive all-terrain tires in a 40 inch size. So um, kind of different kind of something that you don't see every day. So that's going to be the first thing today is just going through and changing all four tires on um, the LX45. It does have, uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, probably not yet. It does have uh, bead locks on it and, and I'm just going to do all my own tire change. I will probably take them over and get them balanced at the shop uh, that's down the street. They're usually pretty good with me and, and doing that as long as I do the mounting and balance or mounting, they'll do the balancing uh, with the bead locks. So Hopefully I can show you through a few things with that and uh, yeah, enjoy my small space today because it's going to feel real cramped. I think I'm going to have to back this thing out and swap some things around to get a little workspace where I can get the uh, engine hoist over and um, yeah, set up a station for changing these out. We'll see how that goes. Uh, nothing too special. Just had to back this thing out a little bit, get me some space to work inside and uh, take the tire and wheel off. And uh, one of the reasons, and I'll show you here in a second, why I'm replacing these is that did have one failure. So we did the Colorado backcountry discovery route um, last season, last year actually, as a replacement for a Ducey Ursham trip. Um, it was the year that they had um, a ton of snow. And so I did have, so we did the Colorado BDR trip. It's 750 miles of dirt road um, across Colorado from the Four Corners area to um, up by the Wyoming, it's to the Wyoming border north of uh, Steamboat. Um, so I did have a, I did manage to poke something through the tire. Um, see if I can get you guys off here for a second. Come with me. May Hannah. Totally just didn't knock everything over. Um, anyways, so um, had managed to poke a hole in this tire on um, the trip. It was a very small hole. It could have been a um, could have been a nail or something sharp. I was at like 10 PSI, um, you know, for the ride quality on a dirt road trip like that. And so, um, I don't know, maybe that was a little low, but uh, uh, I did manage to put a plug in it and do the rest of the trip, which was, I think the majority of it. I think the, the I think I poked the hole on the first, first day, caught it kind of on the the end of the first day. Um, it was kind of slow leak, um, kind of a pain to find actually I should drive in a puddle, um, to find the hole. And, uh, so plugged it and then just monitored it. It was pretty slow leak. Um, and, uh, finished the whole trip, actually aired up, drove home, all that stuff. Um, and then basically, uh, ran it around like that for a couple months, a couple little trips here and there, Moab, Sand Hollow, stuff like that. Um, but it did over time get worse. It is kind of in that area of the tire where I think the, the different, uh, cord packages meet for the carcass, like the radial part and the sidewall part, it's right in the edge of that. So I didn't really feel good about, um, patching it per se. 
you know, like with a take it apart, put a traditional patch on the inside. Um, so, um, anyways, that's, that was kind of what led to the, uh, the tire change overall, but that was the second set of, uh, Patagonia MTs. These are the original version, um, and the black labels too. And I have been all over the place in them. Um, we did the doozy, did the Rubicon trip three times now on them. Um, you know, sand hollow, Moab, uh, snow wheeling, everything. So I think they're a good tire. I can't fault a tire for having one failure really. Uh, and the MT-02s, which are the new version of the MT tire, uh, are significantly stronger yet. So I will probably go back to those. Um, but I did want to try these XTs as just a, a comparison. Um, cause I don't think really a lot of people have a lot of experience in, in the big AT tires. And I'm kind of curious what that actually means. There's, I, I run the XT on my F350 pickup in just a stock 285 size. Um, and they've been great. Um, quiet, wear good, great traction in the winter. Um, wear nice, all those things. So I'm curious how that translates into a 40, but anyways, so this was the, the one tire that, that got damaged and, uh, now I got to set all this stuff back up again and maybe I can set you guys up here for a second. These are magnetic. I don't, these, uh, DJI cams. So you can set them on metal and stuff. And, uh, and they won't fall off, but, um, yeah. Tire. We're going to need this engine hoist here in a minute. I'll show you why on that. And then, uh, poor tripod. My mini tripod got hurt. Um, I did want to show you guys one more thing. Hey, come over here. So I do run these, um, uh, Jantz, uh, deflators on most of my off-road vehicles. Um, they're basically just, a, a fancy valve cap that allows you to air down the tire without having to pull the valve stem and then air up back through the, the extension. They come with these little vinyl caps. So, um, yeah, get this thing aired down, get you back up on the tripod here, get all these, uh, Oh, oh, I think I, oh, I actually broke my, this tripod. It wasn't expensive. I'll show you. So, yeah, whoops. I guess that's what happens when a tire falls on it. All right, well, I'm not saying that was my favorite one, but anywho, I will go get a different one. I need to take my DJI mount off because that's, that is one nice thing about these cameras is they all have these, uh, these mounting systems. So anyways, we'll be back. Hold one.
حتما Now I get to, oh, hey guys. So now I get to talk about <laughs> taping your beads. I don't know if you can see that much or not. So this rim you can see was taped on the inner bead and you could just see in the previous video how well that works for inner bead retention as we were pulling the, the tire out. So that was just the inner bead causing all that resistance. So this is um, two wraps of Gorilla Tape. And uh, the only downside is it is kind of a, a one-time use thing. So once you fully dismount the tire, you pretty much have to replace the tape. It does get um, kind of bunched up as the tire comes off. So we've got to go through and, and cut that off, take it off, clean the wheel up, and then rewrap the wheel and tape um, but it's not that bad. Um, in my opinion, the, the best bead insurance you can get for the money, um, it's, you know, you can do the inside and the outside of a traditional, uh, set of wheels for probably 40 bucks, give or take these days. I do use, uh, actual Gorilla Tape. It's quite a bit thicker. Um, than traditional uh, duct tape or uh, like gaffer's tape or something like that. Um, but it, it, especially on the, doing on the inside of beadlocks is good insurance. So yeah, it's, it's worth it, I think. Um, getting it off, on the other hand, can be kind of fun. It's not terrible, um, but it does, does kind of make a mess. It is super ewy gooey. But hopefully you're not mounting up tires and wheels every day and it doesn't matter that much. Yeah, and you can see this was only um, two wraps. So you can see how much that added. It is different depending on what um, what wheel you're working on and, and some things like that. You know, what the wheel tire combination you're working on. Um, I don't worry too much about the, the glue part on the wheel. Uh, as leftovers. If it's really bad, this set's been done uh, two, maybe three times. So it is starting to build up a little bit. I did get some of that like goo, goo off stuff. So I might, depending on how this looks when I get all this off. Might hit it with some of that clean it up just a little bit stuff still sticky this is multi-year old tape too it's definitely still got some tenacity to it
I don't remember the first, I, I think it was the first time I ever heard of taping beads was like pirate days, probably. I think in some, in some way it kind of evolved from um, people having problems with certain manufacturers of beadlocks and different tire combinations that would have a looser fit and they would burp air on the, on the, uh, inside bead. And so people were kind of looking for solutions for that. And I think they, you know, Hey, if we just make the, made the wheel bigger and what's an easy way to make the wheel bigger, let's just try some tape. So that's the first I remember of it. And that was at this point, decades ago, early two thousands, I think, um, you know, kind of when the first beadlock wheels, you know, we had the Hummer wheels were getting pretty, were pretty popular because they were like a cheap double beadlock. We still, you know, the, the off-road community kind of borrowed a lot of tech from the um, dirt track racer type stuff in the 90s, you know, but there wasn't like a lot of beadlock wheel options and they were really expensive. So everybody was kind of looking for um, alternatives and still to this day, I mean, there's like the, there's some fancy options out there on the market, like the method bead grip, which is basically just like a, a super large, aggressive safety bead on the wheel, um, and stuff like that. And so I still think to this day, like for the average person that taping the inner and outer beads of just traditional normal wheels is probably good enough for most people and that'll get you as long as you have some experience and drive um no i'm not going to say it super carefully but if you drive with some kind of caution that'll get you well into the into the single digits for air pressure and probably even low single digits with enough experience down into the, you know, five, four, three stuff where you need it for snow wheeling and stuff like that. So all right, this one we can tape back up. It looks like. It's interesting. I got a burr. I don't know if you can see that, but I've got a burr on the, the beadlock part of the wheel. So take a file to that and touch that up a little bit. But I don't know, must have been from a rock impact, like through the, through the tire. Impressive. whole time nah kind of all right take these up oh. so I guess I am cutting my head off a little bit there we go so I usually put a mark on the wheel. This one's still got one on it, just with Sharpie for a start stop spot. And uh, it just depends which kind of hand you like using for this stuff. But I'm right handed, so I like having the the inside bead on the right, the right side. I don't think it matters which direction you go. And then I try and go basically about 50% across the valley of the, the bead with the tape. Some, everybody kind of has a different answer for that. Some people do it right at the, 
right at the edge of the safety bead. Some people go all the way across the bead, like if you're trying to prevent burping, maybe that would be a better, better plan. Uh, working on carpet is nice because it lets you kind of slide the tire around. I don't worry too much about getting it um, press down at this stage. I just try and get it neatly in place over the safety bead. And then I go through um, and, and press it down with uh, something. Not my fingers, if I can usually remember, because by the time you get done doing a set of wheels, he ends up getting pretty sore. But that is generally all there is to it with taping beads. And I lost my little Razor knife. Oh, there it is. It's definitely like something like the back of this razor knife works really good for getting the the tape to stick down to conform over the the safety safety bead and you do want it to be pretty pretty tight to the wheel and make sure you try and get you know minimize the, the little bubbles and work that stuff out as much as you can And I'm sure there's some magic combination of wheels out there that doesn't doesn't require that you run tape on the inside bead, double bead locks, you know, something, something, whatever. Um, but I think for the money, it is some of the best bead insurance you can get. Um, all right, so we're pretty good there. Double check for some bubbles. Doing the inside bead is always easier than the outside bead because of this big um, dish change. So when you do you know, if you were doing traditional, traditional wheels with uh, where you have to do this, this side um, also, uh, sometimes it helps to cut the slits in the tape as you fold it over into this, this valley. Um, I've, I've seen people use narrower, like the one inch wide tape or just ripping the tape in half. So, anywho. That is the, the basics of taping wheels. And I think you could see how much resistance it was to un, unbeating with the, when you watch me pull that wheel out of the, out of the, uh, or pull the tire off the wheel, whatever you want to call it. Oh. So on to next steps is I always put the, um, the wheel on a, on a bucket to get it up out of the way. Sometimes, um, this works pretty good for the whole process. Other times you have to do it as a second step. Um, it just depends on the tolerance of, of the wheel and the tire to get the, the inner bead to go over the beadlock um, stuff. 
So um, yeah, we'll try it like this first and then we'll, if we need to, we can set it on the ground and then it goes on really easy. But this just kind of saves a step if we can get it to go on. All right, sorry about that. My uh, camera battery died right in the middle and I didn't notice. So uh, anyways, let's try that again. So wheel, <laughs> tire. Um, I am going to do the large letters and that's typically the raised large letters are where the, the dots are. So yellow dot, red dot, yellow dot usually goes to the, to the valve stem. Um, or at least that's how I've done it in the past. a little tighter so we're gonna go for the next stage on the bucket get 40s they said it'll be fun they said done it so you've got to get the the tire to sit down on the beadlock portion and not be all out of position when you put the ring stuff on Man, just having all kinds of camera things today. I don't know. Maybe it's the mic. Like I should turn. Uh, oh, what's it called? Like the voice control thing off. I think sometimes you say things that the camera or the camera thinks is like the keywords, which I can't say now because they'll turn off. Um, Not too terrible. Not great. 
great, but not too terrible. Little bit of anti seize. Not going crazy with these. But I do think a little bit helps with the steel and aluminum wheels and all that stuff. I should just put you guys on time lapse for this next part. What do you think? Maybe? Okay, we'll try that. Got all the bolts on there and everything. My mic fell off again. But uh, so now I usually just take a small um, quarter inch or three eighths ratchet and start to work my way um, around everything. Uh, these segmented rings are, I guess, a little bit different in how they go down. Um, I am basically just looking for like super light right now, um, just to get everything kind of slightly beyond finger tight, but um, just getting everything started down. until everything kind of gets touched and whatnot. And then I will usually do a crisscrossy type pattern with a, um, on these ones, like a quarter inch rat uh, impact. Seems to work pretty good. And of course, you know, um, if you have any that are, the heads are, you know, totally boogered up or, um, you know, just like bent or stretched or whatever fasteners, it's like a good time to replace them. But I will admit that I don't, I know some people replace all the B-lock bolts every time, and I, I've never gotten that crazy with it. These trail gear B-locks have actually been pretty darn good for me. I do, I do tend to check them on on bigger trips, um, but in general, they seem to stay stay fairly tight 
without getting crazy. I don't get a lot of loose ones. I don't, don't get a lot of broken ones, anything like that with these. So I've been pretty happy. They are heavy wheels in general, just uh, thick everything. about that all right so now we gotta air this thing up and uh, I usually use just a just a spritz of soap solution on the tape just to keep it from bunching up I leave the tire like this on the on the uh, Five gallon bucket. There we go. Oh, this is probably going to get noisy if we use the big compressor and all that, but I think it'll be. Worth it. Maybe. Oh. Uh, one of those small shop feeling moments. Well, I don't know if the compressor will kick on or not, but and of course, right when I, um, right when the camera turned off the, uh, the the bead popped all dramatically and everything over the tape so um yeah that's how it goes maybe i'll catch one of the next ones
you guys ever seen one of these auto inflators? So, I don't know if you guys can, sorry if it's dark all of a sudden. My light go out. There we go. Anyways, these little auto inflators. So you plug this into your um, air source and uh, you wouldn't want to use it to pop a bead on or anything, but basically it's just a set it and forget it thing. You set the pressure, put it on and it just runs its cycle and reads out the pressure on the, as it goes up. And we'll just take it up to the, take it up to the preset pressure. So pretty neat. They're uh, you can get these on Amazon now for, I don't know, like a hundred bucks, something like that. I was doing some tire inflation stuff. I was curious how fast it was and different than the other ones and through the valve stem or without, but overall it's pretty, pretty easy stuff. This is going through the um, Janssen inflator and uh, Chuck and all that stuff. So these aren't, I mean, I don't know. Shop air isn't always the fastest through a valve core and all that stuff. But. I think it just beeps when it's done. There you go. All right, stop beeping. get to play with the gadget and uh yeah maybe i'll move you guys over i don't have to move you much do i no nah. right there ish put this tire back on oh yeah i was gonna pop the wheel weights off this guy did have some on the back and I will save those guys some work later kind of an impressive looking all-terrain tire though it's got a pretty square shoulder to it compared to the um, Patagonia MT. But I can never really fault the Patagonia MT for anything. It did whatever I wanted to do with it so far. All right.
That is. Well, that shows up in the video and all, but that is a good looking tire. Different. But pretty good looking. All right, well, yeah, we'll get the rest of these done. I don't think I'm gonna film all that for you guys because this is already gonna be too long, but I will bring you back when we do some kind of modification or the next um, like a walk around type thing. Does that sound good? So we'll go over some of the, uh, we'll go over some of the packing stuff and, uh, yeah, packing. Uh, I'm going to do a couple little modifications maybe, um, organizing and whatever for this big long trip, but that's uh, changing the tire on a beadlock rim, kind of the garage way. And uh, if you have any tips or tricks, something different, share a comment below. And uh, yeah, thanks for following along and we'll see you on the next one.